Hey guys, as requested, I'm going to review a video by Nima Delgado. It's called The Truth About Being Vegan. Vegans are often stereotyped as weak, skinny hippies who love to shove their views down other people's throats. To be fair, I am a bit of a hippie. And as somebody who's never eaten meat and vegan for the last eight years, I can say that the skinny part isn't true. <laughs> At least not for me. Many people have... Right off the bat, I gotta say that he doesn't look like a typical vegan whatsoever. And supposedly he was a vegetarian since birth. Do I believe that? No. Maybe he was a pescatarian. A lot of people don't see fish as meat for whatever reason. I don't know why. Because it comes from the water. Meat from the water is not meat, I guess. It's very clear that he has good genetics. Maybe he grew up on raw dairy. I could still somewhat believe that. But uh, that's why we don't have cases of vegans since birth. There's never been and never will be a case. Conflicting opinions about whether or not a vegan diet is actually healthy or is the lack of quality protein and nutrients found in animal products actually detrimental to your health. So many people think- Wait, did he just say that there's a lack of nutrients in animal products? Did I understand it correctly? Because plants don't have over 15 nutrients, whereas Meat has every nutrient, way more than in plants. <laughs> Is this guy joking? It really seems like he's a poster child for veganism because he has good genetics, he's uh, relatively good looking, I suppose, and uh, if you believe that you're gonna look like this after eight years of veganism, then you're incredibly wrong. You need to eat meat in order to survive, but as somebody who's never eaten meat before in their life, one thing I know for sure is that I'm still alive. Am I alive? Is it yeah, but you were not a vegan since birth. You were supposedly a vegetarian, which means that you got all of the animal nutrients, which you wouldn't get on a vegan diet. Lower amounts than you would get in meat, but still. This is a simulation. <laughs> anyway. And as for whether or not you can build muscle or be a successful bodybuilder, you definitely can. However, if you're somebody who is curious about trying veganism, then I think it's important to know about some of the biggest misconceptions about it. The first of which... Most people say that he's on drugs. Uh, I don't disagree for sure. I have no idea, whatever, I don't really care. But uh, again, he doesn't look like a typical vegan who goes to the gym whatsoever. Actually, none of them look like him. Is that there is a big difference between what people think veganism is versus what it actually is. So most people have a very limited understanding of what veganism actually is. By definition, it's the practice of not eating any animals or using their byproducts to the best of one's ability. And unfortunately, like any ism, it's the people in the group that are most extreme that end up becoming the misrepresentation of that entire group. But the truth is, you might have more in common with vegans than you might think. So vegans care about- More in common? It's interesting that he said that vegans try to avoid animal products as much as possible, which means that maybe he's like unnatural vegan, a freegan. If there's leftover food or they just think of some reason to eat animal products, then it's okay to eat it. Maybe he's really that kind of a vegan. That I could believe for sure. Their health, their loved ones, animals, and the environment that they live in. They strive to become a better version of themselves and simultaneously help make the world better place. So they deeply feel empathy whenever they witness oppression, suffering, and injustices. Name one way that you or any vegan makes the world a better place. Just one way. I'm waiting. Their empathy and compassion extends beyond humans and includes animals and the environment. It extends beyond humans. Yet I've never seen a vegan being compassionate towards humans. Never. In any video, article, or anything at all, vegans always hate on humans who eat their natural food, which is meat. I've never seen anybody being compassionate towards vegans who were malnourished. Over 90% of the vegans on YouTube quit in the last five years. I've never seen anybody being compassionate towards their health issues. And as an actionable way to try to reduce the amount of suffering and damage in the world, they simply choose not to eat animals or support industries that perpetuate the suffering, exploitation, and damage of the environment. Okay, look, I don't want to sit here and make a blanket statement that I think everybody should be vegan. I think there are many people in the world that don't have the means, the accessibility, or the information. But for those of us that do have these luxuries, we also have the luxury of choice. Vegans are simply trying to bring awareness to the fact that if you... It's kind of nice that he says that not everybody should be vegan. He's not as radical as most of them. But of course, nobody should be seeing as plants don't have over 50 nutrients. 
A good example that I gave many years ago was based on a study about vitamin A. Over 50% of people in the study couldn't convert beta carotene to vitamin A. Vitamin A is not found in plants at all, which means that on a vegan diet, these people would be deficient in vitamin A. Have the access, the means, and the information, then you do have a choice. And every choice that we make and every dollar that we spend is a vote for the kind of world that we want to live in. Vegans simply want to choose a world. That no, that's the thing. You do not have a choice genetically. A lot of people simply can't convert beta carotene to vitamin A. There's nothing they can do about it. That's their buddies. That chooses compassion over violence, harmony over destruction, and peace over suffering. And if you feel like that's the kind of world that you want to live in, then you might have more. In that also doesn't make any sense because plant farming kills way more animals than any factory farms on Earth. All of them combined. Plant farming statistically kills more animals. That's why you can't say that you want to reduce the suffering. Then you would stop all monocropping, for example. Common with vegans, and you think. So the next biggest concern is whether or not veganism is sustainable. And as I mentioned before, I was born and raised vegetarian. I've never eaten meat. Vegan the last eight years. And if I can do it, you can probably do it too. I am not an anomaly. There are thousands of examples of people who are thriving on a vegan diet, and even professional athletes too. And if you don't believe me, check out a movie called The Game Changers. You might even see a familiar face. <laughs> now, I could sit here and try to reference a bunch of scientific papers to prove to you that you can drive on a vegan. He is absolutely an anomaly if he actually is a vegan. And uh, most of the people from Game Changers are not vegan anymore, actually. <laughs> in diet. But let's be honest, there are plenty of scientists who are much more capable of doing that than me. And I would probably only leave you feeling more confused because as soon as you open up Instagram, you're going to see other people quoting studies that say otherwise. All right. So how do you know whether or not something is possible or not or what to believe? Well, you're going to have to try it for yourself. You simply don't know what you don't know until you try something. And don't just blindly believe what people say online and adopt it as truth. If you have an open mind and are willing to try something new, you might just access higher levels of mental, physical, and even spiritual well-being that you didn't know were possible because you've been so acclimated to your everyday experience. The key, like anything, is to do it properly. And I'm sure you've heard, seen, or known somebody this video is funny. at one point in that stop <laughs> because they said it either wasn't feeling well or that it wasn't providing enough nutrition to facilitate their fitness goals. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It's not the vegan diet that didn't work. It was their vegan diet that didn't work or their conviction. And I'll address the biggest mistakes that people make when they attempt to go vegan in my next video. But for now, let me talk about... Plants in general don't have, as I said, 15 nutrients. There's no way to do veganism right, seeing as it will always cause malnutrition. What is he exactly talking about? Maybe he's really a vegan. Let's just say that he is. Then he's probably on a million supplements. Some of them probably work somewhat biochemically, and that's why he's surviving. But really, it's just good genetics. That's what he's body is based on is just his genes about the biggest misconception of all look i get it salads suck and i don't like eating them either i like eating pizza tacos burritos bowl. he admits that he doesn't like salads yes nobody likes salads because you're eating man-made plants that taste horrible usually bitter you have to cover them up with lots of dressings full of sugar and whatnot yeah <laughs> thanks for admitting it all sushi just like everybody else Sushi. Sushi is made from raw fish, but whatever. Except the vegan version of it. And the truth is, you don't... Yeah, but if you crave sushi, how can you even crave sushi? It doesn't even make any sense. If you eat sushi, you probably ate raw fish at some point. I don't believe that this guy never ate meat. He probably ate sushi and now he maybe eats vegan sushi now and then have to only eat salads. There is so many vegan options these days that are not only nutritious, but also really tasty. In fact, I actually have a few videos. Yeah, there's so many vegan options these days, but what did you eat before that? You never tried any of the real options of those foods? That's what you're trying to tell us. Explaining exactly how I eat right here. Many people struggle with the idea that they have to give up their favorite foods or even aspects of their culture when they go vegan. But as somebody who's traveled all over the world, I can honestly say that I have yet to find a place that I have struggled to be vegan. In fact, some parts of the world have even more vegan options than we do here. And you might actually be surprised to find out that there are many more vegan options around you that you are just unaware of because you weren't looking for them. You can try to use the app Happy Cow and it will actually tell you what vegan restaurants or vegan items on menus are nearby. And it Happy Cow is a good website to find vegan events and go crash them. In regards to it being more expensive, it really just depends on the person and the kind of lifestyle that you live. If you're going out and eating at restaurants every single day and buying expensive specialty items, then of course, yeah, it's going to be expensive. 
But if you prepare your food at home and focus on less processed foods, it can actually be way more affordable than a traditional diet. In fact, an Oxford study actually took a look at this and determined that a vegan diet was the most affordable diet next to a vegetarian diet. There are a ton of other... That's not in any way a good thing. That means that the government subsidizes this diet, especially grains and all of the slave food. It's food that peasants only ever ate in history and now vegans eat it because they were brainwashed to eat peasant food. Misconceptions that I could talk about, but I don't want you to think that I'm trying to convince you to do something that you don't want to do. I'm just simply trying to bring awareness to the fact that if you want to be vegan and if you are curious about it and it feels like something that's aligned with your morals and the way that you want to live your life, then you absolutely can thrive on a vegan diet. As I said, I feel like this guy is sort of like a poster child of veganism, as in a, you see him and you believe that this is what you're going to look like if you're vegan for long enough, as if your health is going to get better and better, as if you're going to gain muscle in the gym, you will have good skin from what we can see, good hair, all of it is genetic of course, but uh, it's very hard for people to understand this. Nowadays when we look at a human being, we judge them uh, over 90% by their genetics. We don't really think about what impact diet has on their looks, we just see their genetic makeup and uh, I can understand why people fall for veganism when they see this guy's channel or others who already quit. And people kind of ignore this, that over 90% of vegan YouTubers who were popular have quit. A lot of them deleted their channels or the videos at least, or they made videos of why they are no longer vegan, but uh, the vegans simply attacked them and they just kind of bury this. Why would you quit veganism if it was healthy, if you felt good? If you were on a diet which is natural for human beings, which is the only diet that you can feel good on, then you would never quit it because you would feel so good. You would make vegan videos for 20, 30 years, all of your life, your children would be vegan. It would be amazing. Veganism would have taken over the whole earth. Everybody would go vegan because it would feel so amazing. But what we saw is that most people quit veganism. Stop making nonsense videos like this, talking about your own experience and talk about all of the health issues that people experienced on a vegan man-made diet, talk about why they quit veganism. That would be an actually truthful video about veganism. Thanks for watching.